What's up everybody? It is Carlos Collects Comics and I'm here to share with you some of the recent pickups that I've made over the past week and a half. All right, so hey, look, check it out. I've got some I've got a mixture of books that I want to show you. Um, they're different from different sellers um, on Facebook, Instagram, eBay, and uh, and then also some new comic uh, new comic book day books. Um, it's been a few. Uh, it's been a week or so since I posted. Uh, I was trying to get my tech stuff figured out here, and still getting it set up. But I'm excited. I'm also excited because I'm putting together um, a new space to shoot in my little office here. Um, this is going to be. I'm going to be moving. I think from a, from here into a different spot within that within the space and uh, I'm excited about it um, but I wanted to show you a few things that I picked up I'm gonna start off with um, letting you know so we had a really cool convention here um, and myself and some of the guys from the Strictly Comics YouTube channel uh, were we got to go to this um, we got to go to a comic convention and hang out and we met up and I took my son also and got to meet several different people um, some artists and, and different stuff. I've, I've got some cool stuff. Hopefully it'll be getting in uh, in a relatively quick amount of time, but uh, it was just a really neat experience and I wanted to share some of the pickups from this uh, from this video. Or, I mean from this from this uh, con that we went to. Um, one of the things I got that's pretty cool was this print by Tone Rodriguez. Um, he, he also he autographed it here in the bottom bottom corner here and he's just a really cool guy he did layouts and and some work on the upcoming or on the current uh, stray dogs series which I've been enjoying I've enjoyed it I've read uh, issue one and I'm looking forward to issue two he did a sketch cover for me also which I'm looking forward to showing maybe I'll maybe I'll drop that in here um, just a picture of that but it's off getting graded right now because I did decide to go ahead and slab it um, even though it was a picture of our dog cinnamon um, I have been have been shifting towards picking up um, Silver Age books, and I came across a few pieces that I just really, really felt like, hey, I need to, I need to go ahead and pick these up at this convention, and I wanted to share those with you. Um, I'll save the real fun one for after, uh, for the end, but um, so okay, well, a couple of Bronze Age stuff too. So I found a, a little copy here of Nova. Uh, number Nova number two, um, the second appearance of Nova, first appearance of a couple of a couple of the characters Condor and Powerhouse, and um, you know it's a it's a mid grade copy like maybe a six zero or so, but uh, you know it's a good it was a good price so I picked it up. Um, also got uh, the other half of this is Amazing Spider Man number two o two. And I've got the 201, and I wanted to pair this one with it. It's one of the early appearances of the Punisher when he teams up with Spider-Man. Got uh, Adventure into Fear, number 11, um, featuring the Man-Thing. And this is the um, first appearance of the Nexus of All Realities. And I know that the Nexus and Nexus Beings has been mentioned in WandaVision, and they're probably going to explore it uh, as, as it goes forward into the Doctor Strange sequel. So when I came across this for you know really really low price I said you know let me go ahead and pick it up and you know just see if anything happens this book is one that I've had my eye on I passed on it on a sale for the local comic shop day but it's another Silver Age fun book um, it, this is Fantastic Four number 54 it's the third appearance of Black Panther and just a really cool Silver Age cover another uh, Silver Age Fantastic Four piece and it was something that I uh, when I came across it, I said, you know, let me go ahead and pick this up because I'm I'm a Black Panther fan, and I thought it was, you know, it was just one that I wanted to get, and it was a pretty decent price because I got it as a combo um, with this slabbed copy of Incredible Hulk number 102. Uh, it's a 3.5 off-white to white pages, and it's even got the little little custom label up here at the top, and this this and the Fantastic Four. Uh, number 54, um, great combo deal from the dealer. 
and really good price on on the two of them combined because I bought uh, together and you know it was one you know I'm, I'm really really getting into some of these um, older Marvel books from the 60s especially the ones that are the first um, the first issue of an ongoing series featuring some of these characters um, sometimes their first appearances are kind of hard to come by but you know for you know they're kind of hard to afford but um, the first issue of their first solo title can be pretty um, can be pretty affordable you know all things considered now the big pickup for this convention was uh, the same thing that I'm talking about and this is Captain America number 100 and it's in really good condition um, I on the spot considered it about a 6.0 but it could come back higher after pressing and cleaning but the thing that I wanted to show is that right there it may be a little bit blurry maybe a little bit hard but yeah that is a Stanley signature right there um, now I wouldn't normally you know trust just any dealer but um, the story checked out the signature looks authentic and right for the time frame in which it would have been signed and the story lines up and the dealer did have quite a few um, Stanley signatures that um, were part of part of his his stock so uh, when I saw this and it, you know it was it was, a, it was not a comic booth um, at the convention it was just tucked away in the back corner and when I came across it I just said man I, I'm I'm gonna kick myself if I don't pick this up and so but I didn't right away I actually went home I talked to my wife about it I slept on it and the next morning I woke up and I just said I need to go and get that book so day two when I went back to the convention I you know made a couple rounds and then or stopped off a couple of booths real quick and then went straight over there and sure enough it was still there and I just told the dealer I said alright let's do this and I picked it up and I'm pretty I'm I'm very pleased with the purchase I think it's a good solid buy uh, it was a good price especially given the grade um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to going ahead and sending it into CBCS for authentication and for uh, slabbing after it gets a good press and clean um, a couple of other let's see okay so let's shift gears to uh, new comic book day um, because I do want to try to keep up with those and make some recommendations um, I I've missed uh, I think two weeks worth, but I want to get back on it before this week um, because this video is being recorded on a t on a uh, Monday, and I wanted to make sure to have this video done and out there before another new comic book day comic book day hits. Um, so these are the books I picked up this this week, or I mean the, over the past couple weeks. Uh, Deep Beyond number two. I was a little bit disappointed in, in issue number one. I did pick up all of the covers because I like the artwork and I like the original concept. I thought it was going to be a big monsters under the under the sea, um, terrorizing people in a pressurized environment, but it wasn't quite that. It was uh, it, there was a lot going on, and I'm I'm giving it issue two, three, maybe four, before I just I just give up. But I'm 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 st I'm hoping for the best. But this is one of those ones you're going to have to judge for yourself. Is it too much for you to handle as far as storylines and characters and right turns and all that stuff? Because it's it's getting to be a bit much for me and it's only issue two. So I don't know if I can give you a resounding recommendation on that one. Um, another one. Okay, so I Walk With Monsters. Um, this is a very dark story. Um, it's about a girl who's been um, abused, um, sexually abused and molested, and she's now tracking them down along with a man who turns into a creature. And it's, it's, a, it's a horror film, you know, because obviously the content's disturbing. Um, I picked up the first issue and thought it was interesting, read the second. I said, okay, let me continue this through. Um, it's issue four. It is dark. It is a difficult one to... Um, stomach and I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this one all the way through I'm trying to see it through to see what ends up happening and and it's a big confrontation in issue four but it is a very very dark read so I can't recommend it for all ages 
I don't even know that I can recommend it for, for really much of anybody. I just, you know, I, I got started on the story, and, and like a lot of us, I'm a completionist. So I want to try to complete the story and, and get to the end of it and, and get the run, but it's, it's, a, it's a dark read and it's hard to stomach. Um, a much lighter fare, which I'm really enjoying and I highly recommend, is Erratic. Uh, this is Erratic number four. I did go ahead and pick up two issues because I have been doubling up on the run of Erratic. Now this is a little, uh, it's a small company and it's not necessarily a um, like big story. That There's some big elements to it, um, but I just think it's a really cool premise and they're really starting to do more with it. Um, I, I like the lead character, I like the supporting cast. And I like the kind of what they're what they seem to be building towards. Um, Upshot's been putting out some pretty good uh, some pretty good books, and so I've got to recommend this. You know, you can still find issue one for fairly affordably, and I do very much recommend picking it up um, because it's a good solid story, and I want to see how it's going to end. So that's one of my recommends for this uh, for this run. Okay, Origins is an, is one of the ones by Boom. This is the fifth issue. I am picking up A and B covers, um, and my A cover is a little bit dinged here, so I don't know. I may take it back to my LCS to see if they'll switch it out for me. Um, I've, I've enjoyed Origins because it's kind of a twisted version of, of the post-apocalyptic tale. It's got definitely some sci-fi elements to it. I It's not for everybody. It's not going to be for everybody, and it's not going to be the flashiest title that you'll come across. But I think it's a solid story, and if you're into science fiction and kind of clones and dystopian futures, this may be something for you. So maybe it's something to trade weight for, or you can probably find the back issues for relatively inexpensive. Um, as you know, I, th I don't know if I shared... Yeah, I think I shared about how, how heavily I bought into this next one. Um, for issue one, but I've scaled it back considerably for the next few issues. Uh, Radiant Black, uh, this is issue number two. Did pick up a couple of copies of it. Um, I'm getting some really strong Invincible vibes off of it. I'm a huge Invincible fan. I thought it was fantastic when I first picked it up uh, way back in what's it, like 2003, and Robert Kirkman's writing. Um, you know, Higgins is not. Actually, I hope he doesn't watch this. I, I don't feel like it's as strong out of the gate as Invincible. That being said, I could definitely relate to the the lead character in terms of um, you know having a dream and wanting to chase after it, but it not always working out sometimes. I think all of us have a little bit of that. Um, I I'm, I'm giving I'm giving this one a good amount of you know a good amount of leeway because I really want to see if it works out and how strong it, it ends up being as far as an interconnected universe for Image Comics. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick with it. You know, I'm going to stick with it for, for a while, at least through the first major story arc and see what happens. And I'm, I'm also curious about uh, what kind of a, you know, if there's going to be any kind of an Invincible level twist. And it's going to be a hard one to top because Invincible was just so well crafted. And I don't know that you know any other comic is going that any other comic is going to be able to deliver on that level of a twist because I don't think people were looking for it, but now they might be. So that's Radiant Black number two. Um, Radiant. I also did pick up um, a couple of copies. I really like this second print cover of Radiant Black number one, and so I did pick up a couple copies of this. And enjoyed it, you know, because I, I, you know, I've enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it, but it's not, you know, again, might not be for everybody. It's definitely uh, an Invincible meets Green Lantern vibe to it. Here's one recommendation. So my son also reads some comic books here and there, um, not quite as heavily as me, but he does have his own spec picks. His number one spec pick is uh, We Live. And I think after issue number five, a lot of people were taken out, taken by surprise. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with uh, We Live, with the title. 
But another one he really likes is um, Homesick Pilots. So I picked him up issue number four. And this, the, you know, it's not really my thing, but anything that gets him reading, I'm excited about. Anything that gets him um, excited about comics, I like. So, um, yeah, I don't mind picking these up for him when, when I run by uh, the comic shop. A few more that I haven't shared that are from previous, uh, previous weeks. Um, Proctor, Valley, Proctor Valley Road, number one. Uh, written by Grant Morrison, um, group of teenagers, monsters, dystopian future, um, hellscape type of thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool read. Um, it's worth checking out. Nottingham, the story of the sh of uh, Robin Hood and his merry men as as murderers, as vicious murderers. Uh, it's definitely an interesting horror spin on the popular myth. Uh, but this one may be something that you're looking forward to picking up. Uh, Deep Beyond number two. This is an all. This is a I think a B cover. I picked up and then one that I wanted to share about that I really have enjoyed is um, Scouts Honor. Uh, this is from Aftershock and this is issue number three. My LCS. I think I guess they knew that I was reading it, but they um, were really cool about this. I don't know how. Um, how readily available these are, but they provided me with my LCS with um, with merit badges from the Scouts Honor series. So, <laughs> so these are these are pretty cool. I, I I thought these were neat. They had these in my box for me. And I'm definitely going to put them with the Scouts Honor. But I recommend Scouts Honor because it's got a lot of different things going on. And, it, and unlike Deep Beyond, it's not too much and too confusing. It just kind of flows. And I think that's a testament to really strong writing. It's also a testament to letting the story breathe and not feeling like you have to mash a whole bunch of different stuff into um, a first issue. Uh, this this one, the first issue was solid, um, second issue was good, and and now with third issue, I feel like this is a this is a, a story that's that's doing pretty good. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Uh, okay, so that's those are all um, my LCS pickups. I also want to. Yeah, there's been a bunch of them. There's been a bunch of books that I've picked up that I haven't shown. Um, of course, if you know, as I went back, I've been picking up extra copies of Noctera, number one, um, and the different variants. This, this hands down, is the more new comics I'm reading, the, the stronger, uh, or the better, the stronger ones are rising to the top. I don't, that's not even making sense what I'm saying. It's late at night and I'm tired. But um, I'm doing this. I want to show you these comics. If you haven't read Noctera, number one, you need to. It is really, really good. It's, uh, I think, the one of the strongest first issues that I've come across. It was stronger than Radiant Black. It was stronger than Erratic, number one. Um, it's stronger than Scout's Honor, number one. Uh, this is just a really, really strong book. It, Scott Snyder... Um, and Tony Daniel are like a dream team. And then, you know, um, I'm not sure how to uh, pronounce their their uh, their uh, their inker, but um, it's a really good book. So I had, you know, I think you can you can probably still find uh, copies of issue number one. It's worth picking up, even if you're just a specker or a, or a flipper. It's still well worth picking up. It's a good, solid story, and I, th I think some cool stuff's going to happen with it. So that's Noctera number one, um, Children of the Atom. I mean, it was all right. Everybody's trying to do the Strange Academy redo thing now, you know, with Titans Academy and, but you know, every everything Academy, Gotham Academy, whatever. It, look, it's it, it was all right, but it's not anything great, you know. It's it's just. Um, Star Wars The High Republic, here's the second printing of number two. Um, this is a cool story. I, I, I'm, 
I want to see where it goes. I'm hoping that they do more with it. I got uh, the 1 in 10 of Children of the Atom number 1, uh, Strange Academy number 9, a couple of, this is still a book worth picking up, and then, um, yeah, it's another, very, or it's the main cover for Children of the Atom number 1, which I also picked up. I thought it was a worthwhile, you know, it's a worthwhile pickup because I think, you know, there's going to be some demand around it, but um, it's it's not the strongest one that's being written right now. I also have, let's see, I have some other books that I have picked up from a mail call. I'll show these off. This was part of a mail call that just came in. Um, yeah, the A team. I pity the fool. Uh, A team number one in high grade. A team number two in high grade. And A team number three in, yep, high grade. And they are all, I guess, newsstand. I don't know. But these are easy, easy. 9.6 or better before a press and before a clean. These are definitely going off to CGC. I also picked up uh, GI, you know, you know I've been building my GI Joe run, GI Joe number 27 from a previous video where I talked about um, honorable mint. This was an honorable mention in my GI Joe spec video. Uh, GI Joe number 32. It's one of my top 10 lists of G.I. Joe issues you should be picking up right now. Uh, G.I. Joe number 38, 39, 42, 51, 53. I love this cover. It's just an awesome cover. And then number 146, I guess this is G.I. Joe's Star Brigade. Part of the 80s lot that I picked up that included, that included the A-Team was, and this is, this is just an awesome book right here, Chuck Norris, Karate Kent Commandos, number one. And it's like it brings back so many memories of Saturday morning cartoons. But look at this. But yeah, I, I'd wanted a copy of the Chuck Norris books and had not gotten it yet. Um, also, uh, I have a higher grade set, but I picked up an extra number one of Mask number one. This is from the the this is number one from the miniseries. So this is the first appearance of Mask in comic books. Archie versus Predator, number one of four. And the further adventures of Indiana Jones, number one, in very high grade. This is like super high grade. This is way more high grade than the other um, than the other copy of this same book that I have. Um, that's that's pretty much what I'm going to go with for. That's what I'm going to end the video because it's it's running really long. Um, but I wanted to, I just wanted to share those things with you. I want to give a shout out to the Strictly Comics Affordable Auctions. Uh, I am sometimes a panel member on the Thursday night show, but there's also a uh, Sunday night show as well. That's where I got um, a lot of these sweet books that are mail call books. You can find all kinds of stuff from the hot modern variant covers all the way to the cool classic uh, Silver Age of the 60s books. And there's all kinds of stuff. And so that that's one of the that's one of the um, avenues. Uh, my local comic shop, Bedrock City Comics in Houston, Texas. They've got six different locations, and they always take care of me. Uh, no, I'm not getting paid to say that. Um, I'm not getting any kind of a discount or freebie. I'm just saying it because I have an awesome local comic shop, and I don't mind telling people about it. Um, there's a couple other places. That I think I got some of these books from, like an antique shop off the beaten path 
in uh, Brenham, Texas. But um, but yeah, hey, I've oh, let me show these also. One yeah, last three things real quick. Um, off of eBay, I've talked about it in my spec video for GI Joe. That's GI Joe number thirty-seven. This is the second printing. It does. It is different right here. Um, it doesn't have the same um, stuff, the information there as the first printing, but I picked this up off of eBay for a very good price. It is a near mint that needs a print, a press, just to be sure. Um, this is one of my, and I'll do another video about this, about my collecting goals for 2021, but this was one of the big ones on the list. Uh, a high-grade copy of Thundercats number one. Big thanks to Michael Flint, um, who's a Facebook seller and another collector, um, and he was the one that uh, that hooked me up with this uh, for a great price. And we met up and got to got to uh, got to get it. And then I also got I think I also got this one from I think got this one from uh, him, and then another copy of it from eBay. Um, this is a near mint minus, and it does need. Uh, need a press, but I'm looking at getting this slabbed uh, possibly after I read it because I do like to read um, some of these vintage comics. Um, yeah, I've focused a lot on 80s stuff this year, and it's it's yeah really knocking the knocking the goals out left and right. Um, last one, this was a pretty cool pickup from a local comic shop. It is definitely a mid grade book because these foil covers are super difficult to do anything with. And I am going to send this off for verification and for slabbing. Um, this is Ravage 2099 number one. And right there. Yeah, another Stanley signature. Two Stanley signatures in two weeks. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited, over the moon excited, because uh, Ravage 2099, a lot may not know, um, you know, if you've been collecting for a while, you know, but if, if you're new to collecting, Ravage 2099 was the last original Marvel character that Stan Lee created. Um, he did create him for the 2099 line when they rolled it out. Um, he is, uh, it, it was a massively overprinted book, as were all of them from the 90s. But one of the neat things is that having Stan Lee sign a having a signed copy of Ravage 2999 number one signed by Stan Lee, so um, it's first appearance and origin of the character, plus it's um, Stan's last Marvel character that he created. So there's something neat about this having this, and uh, I highly advise you because they are fairly you know he signed a lot of them, and so they are. Um, easier to come by than some other bigger um, Stanley signatures. So I rec you know, I, I really recommend um, you know, looking around for one of these because this is a neat thing and if you're a child of the 90s it's definitely a reminder about the era and foil covers. I mean, you know, how can you go wrong with foil covers? So that is um, I promise now everything that I have for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that a couple of these books uh, reminded you about something. I hope that a couple of the recommendations you might be able to take away from them and say, hey, you know, let me go check this book out uh, because Carlos recommended it. Make sure to like this video and leave a comment and let me know if you tried out any of the books and what you thought of them. And even if you hated them and you want to know why in the world did you recommend that, Carlos, I still want to hear it. I want to know about it. Last but definitely not least, consider subscribing. I'm going to be adding a lot more content, a lot more uh, material, even some uh, interviews with different creators, and I'm looking forward to sharing it all with you and building a strong community on this channel that's about the love and appreciation of comic books and the art form of comic books and other pop culture stuff can, related to comic books. So hey, this is Carlos Collects Comics, and it's been fun hanging out with you uh, this evening.